You know the game of cricket, the players descend, the balls are bowled and the batsmen are free to play their strokes. The empire does not interfere. He only keeps giving decisions. So the empire says, it's crossed the boundary, four runs. Six, it's over the boundary, he's out. Now, if somebody says, how partial the empire is, this person crossed a hundred, he made a century, and this person was given out on zero, how terribly unfair. People will say the empire was totally unwise. He was only giving decisions on the runs that the players were making. Similarly, God is like the empire, the referee. He gives you the ability to act, he notes your actions, and then he gives the results in accordance with those actions. So in this verse, Sri Krishna is saying, Arjun, I am not the cause of your suffering. I am the cause in the sense I am giving you the results. But like a judge, it was your actions that caused those results. Bhagavad Gita Chapter 5 Verse chanting is followed by translation and commentary by Swami Mukundananda. Nakar Trittvam Nakar Mani Lokasya Srijati Prabhu Nakar Maphala Samyogam Swabhavastu Pravartate Neither the sense of doership nor the nature of actions comes from God nor does he create the fruits of actions. All this is enacted by the modes of material nature, gunas. So, na kartritvam, the sense of doership, na karmani, the actions, none of these are coming from me. Na karma phala sanyogam svabhavastu pravartate. They are all coming from the modes of material nature. So, people often ask this question that why has God made us suffer in this world? It is all his fault. So, the answer comes here that he is not making us suffer in this world. He has created us with free will. Now, free will means that we have the choice to choose as we wish. Like, <coughs> why has God given us this free will? Because without free will, there is no scope for love. A machine cannot love. A machine doesn't have choice. Now, you ask this microphone, that Swamiji, he comes so close to you. Do you love Swamiji or not? <laughs> Microphone says, I have no choice whether he comes close, goes far. So it, without any free will, a machine is unable to love. This love requires the freedom to choose. And God has bestowed that freedom to us along with a huge amount of choice. So there are so many allurements of Maya. And at the same time, there is the bliss of God. And this creates the choices. I said, so why did God make Maya so attractive? People ask, you know, we get into problems with cigarettes. It's, somebody gets addicted now. Supposing God had not allowed cigarettes to be invented, that would be one wise less in the world. Supposing God had not allowed there to be any opium as one of the 8.4 million species, then there would be no addiction because of it. So God is creating all these choices and we are getting stuck because of it. Well, the reason is God is 
giving us the opportunity to choose. Somebody asked Raman Maharshi, why did God create evil? Raman Maharshi said to thicken the plot. He made the plot really thick. Means to now get out of it, you will have to strongly exert your free will. If you have halka phulka prem for God, it will not do. You will have to have really solid prem. And then God will test you, okay, now do you choose this or you choose me? Bhagavan, I choose you. Okay, now I double the allurements. Now do you choose this or do you choose me? Bhagavan, I choose you. I say, all right, I'm quadrup in increasing the allurements a hundredfold. Now do you choose this or do you choose me? They say, look, we treat our children so kindly, we protect them, keep them in the comfort zone. And God throws us out of the comfort zone. What kind of father is he? God says, look, when you treat your children with kids' gloves, they grow up into babies. I want my children, the souls, to grow up as full-fledged souls in super consciousness. So for that, they have to pass through all these tests and allurements. It may be a long process. It may take many lifetimes. But at the end, they will be really something. And he has faith that all of us will reach there one day. He has faith that his university of hard knocks, the universe, this world, is the university of hard knocks. Uh, this university will purify all the souls. And slowly, they will all manifest that inner glory. So he has given us the allurements, he has given us the scope to make mistakes, but he has given us the free will that we mature and we realize, Are bhai, this is all bogus, then we can choose him and find eternal beatitude. We can say that I am not the doer. This body is doing. I am supposed to think I am not the doer, I am not the doer, I am not the doer then why am I getting entangled in the karmas that the body is doing? Then Bhagavan, you should be bearing the consequences, not me, because you are the doer. Sri Krishna says, you are not the body, but the body and mind, they are given to you under your control. And hence you become responsible for your body and mind and their karmas. Just like one, there's a story in the Bhagavatam of the charioteer. He was driving a king to the war. And the king was going to fight the war and get the glory of victory and enhance his kingdom. And one animal came under the wheels and died. So the charioteer said, O oh, king, the karma of killing this animal is yours. The king said, sorry, you are the charioteer. You will bear the karma of killing this animal. The charioteer said, ask Yamaraj. The Yamaraj came there and they asked that who will bear the karma of killing this animal? Yamaraj said, look, O oh king, you were going to fight for your glory. If you had won, the kingdom would be yours. Now in the process, this animal is getting killed. That karma also goes to your account. Likewise, like the chariot, we have our body, mind and intellect and we are the charioteers inside. We are the responsible, the passengers. So that is why the karmas, they accrue to our account. And this sense of ego also God has given us. Now whether we reduce it, we increase it, is all in our hands. God says, I do the work of an empire, like a referee in the game. So in the game of cricket, there are 11 players from this side and 11 from this side. And there are the empires who come down. 
So the umpires keep giving decisions. One leg by. Four runs. Six, sir. He's out. So the umpires only give decisions. Everybody is free to play their own game. Now somebody says, you gave me out and you gave him four runs. The umpire says, it's all depend on how you play. I am just giving the judgment. If somebody doesn't know cricket and they come there on the third day of the game, of a test match, say this player has got 90 runs on the board and these players are already out and the play is already st just starting. What kind of injustice is the umpire doing? So that question will be asked by the spectator who doesn't know the test match was played one day previously as well and one day prior to that as well. Likewise, we people also ask the question, why is there anyai injustice from God? This person is born in a billionaire's house and this person is born in such a poor condition. So God says, that this play happened in the past life, in the life before, in the life before, in the life before. It is all continuing. You may have forgotten, but I remember and I give the fruits. So those fruits come in various forms. If you practiced a lot of music in your last life, in this life those sanskars come so naturally a little bit of practice, you're just able to move ahead. And that's why you feel such a difference in people's musical abilities. One person just picks the harmonium and is already going. And the others practice day and night, still can't do it. Those are the sanskars, their own karmas that are coming as the fruits. Now those fruits could be good or bad. God says, I am the judge. I am not partial. Dhritarashtra asked a question to Sri Krishna after the Mahabharata was over. His hundred sons had died. And Yudhishthir was so kind that he kept his uncle Dhritarashtra in his palace despite all the enmity that Dhritarashtra had practiced. So Dhritarashtra asked Sri Krishna that what karmas did I do? In front of my eyes, a hundred of my sons passed away. And this is one child passes away, it's such a big grief. And hundred children pass away. Imagine the kind of grief for Dhritarashtra. Sri Krishna said, yes, Dhritarashtra, in this life, you did not do anything so bad. What about the past life? Tetarashtra said, in past life also, I didn't do any such thing. He could remember three lives. So Sri Krishna said, the past one, nothing. The past one, not in that either. Before that, Tetarashtra said, nothing. So Sri Krishna said, you have an account of three lives. I have an account of all your lives. It is based on that Sanchit Karma that I am giving you the fruits of your actions. So remember, God is just the judge, the empire in the game. You are free to make your runs. Now if you are a good player, you play well. If you are a bad player, you play badly. But the important point is don't blame God for it. Why is God favorable to this person and unfavorable? God says, look, from my side, I am completely equitable. Little gopi will get the seat that even Shankarji did not in the Maharas. Why? Because the little gopi, an ordinary village woman, she learned to love so selflessly and so perfectly that God became a servant. So Bhagavan says, I am willing to become the servant of my devotees. What 
भाग्य कैन यू नॉट मेक इफ यू पुट इन सफिशेंट एफर्ट्स दैट इज वाई द उर्दू पोएट अलमा इकबाल्स वर्ड्स नीड टू बी रिटन इन गोल्ड खुद ही को कर बुलंद इतना कि हर तकदीर से पहले खुदा खुद बंदे से पूछे बता तेरी रजा क्या है यू इंक्रीज योर एफर्ट्स टू सच एन एक्सटेंट दैट गॉड आस्क यू वॉट काइंड ऑफ डेस्टनी डू यू वॉन्ट माई चाइल्ड 